Hey guys, Tina here. In today's video, I will discuss with you the First Year Trilogy by Robin Hobb, which consists of uh, Assassin's Apprentice, A Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. So firstly, this video is going to be spoiler free, so you know, if you're on a fence and you don't know whether or not you should pick these books up, maybe watch it and then decide. And secondly, and most importantly, I have to remedy something because when I was making my favorite fantasy covers video, I somehow managed to forget to mention these covers, which are like the most beautiful covers that I own and I completely forgot about them and that is just wrong. This is just wrong. And out of the three, I think the Royal Assassin is my favorite and I just love it and it's beautiful and I completely forgot about it and shame on me. But yeah, let's get into the story. So these books tell the story of Fitz, who is the bastard son of chivalry, who is the king in waiting. And once his father realizes that he has fathered the bastard, he abdicates his position and his other brother fills it in. Uh, but yes, Fitz is basically left to be raised by one of chivalry's men, Burrick, uh, who is a stable master at the royal court. And the first few years, uh, Fitz is left to, you know, run pretty wild uh, until his grandfather, the king, Shrewd, uh, takes an interest in him. And uh, then Fitz pledges his allegiance to him, uh, you know, swears that he's going to be his man and work for him. And after that, he is given as an apprentice to the current royal assassin. After that, we get to see Fitz uh, navigate the court intrigue, plot, and conspiracies and such. And, you know, he's a, he's a kid and later on a teenager or a really young man. And, uh, yeah, he's not always equipped to deal with these kind of situations. And sometimes his decisions are rash, not well thought through. And uh, he doesn't really see the consequences of his actions. And that sometimes gets him, gets him into trouble. Um, but, yes, there's obviously other stuff that's going on. <laughs> but, yeah. So aside from Fitz, we have a bunch of other characters that are in this book, and the first one is Berwick, who used to work for chivalry specifically, but uh, you know when Fitz comes along, he is given this little boy, and he has to deal with him, not wanting him or knowing how to deal with him, and at first he's not really warm to him. I think he's a stable master, so he knows how to deal with animals, and I think he sort of treats Fitz like that. Uh, but they get attached to each other. They're sort of like a father-son. They have that kind of relationship going on. So aside from Berg, we have Shade, who is uh, Fitz's master. He's the current assassin. And uh, he, you know, tries to teach Fitz all that he will need to know for, you know, his future life. And he's sort of uh, protective of him and tries his best to help him navigate the court life. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of disagreements there and he's not always available there for Fitz. So, um, yeah, he's not the most reliable uh, character there. So then we have King Shrewd, who, you know, is the king and fits his grandfather. And their relationship is not the closest or the warmest, but he does care about Fitz. Uh, and he tries to protect him and, uh, yeah, in his own way, as much as he can. Then we have uh, King in Waiting Verity, who is... Uh, Fitz's uncle and uh, their relationship is sort of the closest when it comes to royals and Fitz and it's still, you know, it's it's still um, pretty, you know, whenever Verity needs him, he uses Fitz, uh, so it's not, you know, a warm and fuzzy relationship in any way, but he does care about him and he protects him and he tries to help him as best as he can as well. And then, of course, he's Prince Regal, who <laughs> doesn't like anyone. And, you know, he thinks that everybody is against him. And, well, Fitz is at the top of his list, you know. And uh, he really doesn't like him at all. Then we have females who, you know, unlike men, have no problems liking Fitz. The first of those is Molly. And, you know, Fitz and Molly sort of, they're close in age and they kind of grew up together. And uh, you get to see their relationship progress throughout the books. Then we have Patience, who is Chivalry's wife. And... At first, she was really hurt that, you know, her husband had a child out of wedlock. Uh, of course, it was before they get together, you know, so it's, he wasn't cheating. But still, there's a child and she cannot have them and she's pretty hurt about that. But she, you know, gets uh, to like Fitz a lot and she really takes an interest in him and uh, tries to make him better and tries to teach him things and, you know, just make him a better man. And uh, I think she really loves him in her own way. And then we have Catwickan, who is the queen in waiting. And she and Fitz have a, a pretty close relationship at points. Uh, but, uh, you know, things happen and sometimes they kind of drift apart and get closer again. And it sort of also depends on their moods or how they're feeling, you know. Because sometimes they're 
friendly and other times you know she is perfectly capable of letting him you know that she is a queen and he is not you know uh, in the same rank as her and it's an interesting relationship but it's you know it goes it, it's really dependent on uh, how the story goes aside from Fitz maybe the most important character is the fool who is King Shrewd's uh, court jester sort of and um, you know the Fool and Fitz uh, are pretty friendly and uh, but the Fool has certain ideas and uh, designs when it comes to Fitz and he's navigating and pushing him in certain directions and you know because he has ideas what Fitz is meant to do and he's sort of you know nudging him you know to do that and um, Fitz is not always so really thrilled about that but they really get along well and I just love them together. Now, the world itself is not that much different from ours, so it's it's not uh, really hard to get into it. Uh, there are two magic systems. The first one is skill, which is sort of like telepathy, so you can you know communicate with different people at great distances, you know, just mentally, and you can um, suggest things to them and push them in directions. You can also kill, you know, with skills, so it's not simple telepathy. And uh, it's pretty dangerous. It has its consequences for the user as well as you know the potential um, targets of the whoever is using the skill. But the other magic system is the wits, which is uh, a magic that it's really frowned upon, and it's supposed it's really yeah, not considered to be a good thing. And if you have it, <laughs> you better not tell anyone. And it's actually the connection between humans and animals. There's uh, you know, sort of like telepathy, you know, when they communicate, uh, you know, the human and the animal communicate. But it's also, you know, the longer a human and an animal are bonded, so, you know, over time they start to take uh, each other's characteristics. So, you know, an animal would start to think like a human and feel and, you know, think like a human. And uh, a person might, you know, start to get a little more animalistic, but, you know, not turn into an animal, just certain characteristics, you know. Robin Hobbs writing is really easy to get into. I uh, sort of think that she's sort of somewhere between Brandon Sanderson on one side and Patrick Rothfuss on the other because, you know, Rothfuss is really flowery and she, he pays such great attention to the sentences. And Sanderson does the same, but he's sort of more direct. If, you know, that's how I feel. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's making any sense. Uh, but yeah, so Robin Hobb, you know, she's really descriptive. Uh, she can be sort of repetitive at points. Um, and long-winded uh, but you know her writing it's not hard to get into it it flows as well so you know it's definitely not something that should scare you off at all so I hope that I convinced you that you should pick these books up uh, and if I did that great for me and great for you <laughs> and yes thank you for watching this video and see you in my next one bye